I am not going to go through all of the 2018 final, but I'm going to go through the parts of the final that don't look like something on the 2019 final. So like problem one, Find the absolute extrema on an interval. That's just problem 11 on the 2019 final with a slightly different function. Um, part two, mean value theorem. Com three, computing limits by factoring. Four, linearization. Five is something new. Let's look at five. It's been a while, but there was a full section, more or less, on this material. The displacement over an interval is the end position minus the initial position. Average rate of change is the foundation of differential calculus. In this case, that's the average velocity. For some reason, this problem doesn't explicitly ask about the velocity, but the speed is the absolute value of the velocity, and the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, and the object changes direction when the velocity changes sign. So even if you're not explicitly asked for the velocity, it kind of pervades the entire question. One place where the velocity changes sign is outside of the interval we're looking at. So I crossed that out. Six is kind of fun. It's an antiderivative problem because you're given acceleration and then you're given information about velocity and you're asked for the velocity and the velocity is an anti-derivative of the acceleration. And there are an infinite number of antiderivatives from this plus c term, but we want v of zero to be 4.72. And then the height. is the antiderivative of the velocity. And again, you have a constant and the height at time zero should be 1.4. Problem seven is fundamentally, um, we've, like, there's that question about the Susquehanna River in the other test that 
checks whether you know what average rate of change is, but for part A, you compute this. That's the average rate of change. Um, let's see if I can get this in my head. 16 minus 8 plus 1 is 9. 4 minus 4 plus 1 is 1. I make this average rate of change 4. And then B is hope for the quite uh, elementary. Do you realize that the instantaneous rate of change is just the derivative? If you do, you can see that the instantaneous rate of change is also a four. Eight, that's like something on the other test. Nine also is, although the other test calls it the linearization instead of the equation of a tangent line. 10 is u substitution, omit. 11, u substitution, omit. However, you should uh, certainly know the fundamental theorem of calculus. I've graded that homework. I feel like maybe a, a very small portion of the class has turned it in yet. I, uh, I sure hope you do it before the, the final 12. If we had 12 as a typo and rather an ugly typo, if we had this, um, the typo is that your variable down here should not match the variable up here. If we just had this, the derivative would come immediately from the first part of the fundamental theorem. We add a hitch by having an x squared there. And the solution is to let u be x squared. This is not u substitution, even though I know it kind of looks like it. All we're doing is changing this from a function of x to a function of u. And our motivation is to let us use, uh, use the, uh, the chain rule. Derivative of f with respect to x is the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. That's 2u, the natural log of u, times, um, times 2x. And u is a dummy variable. We don't want it in our answer. Fortunately, we can get rid of it.
And we could then simplify that a little. Two times two is four. X times X squared is X cubed. There was a problem much like 13 on the other old final, but it didn't ask you about continuity. This is discontinuous at negative two, and it's discontinuous at three. It's continuous everywhere else. Let's see, where are we? 14, this was a question on one of the tests. 15, I think was also a question on a test, but maybe not. Let's do it just in case it wasn't. So this is the chain rule and you are, those of you with a little physics under your belt may know that this equation, this function I've given you is complete nonsense. Um, objects do not heat up quadratically, they heat up exponentially. But when I, I guess this was a problem from an old test or something, and when I'd introduced it, I hadn't taught how, yet how to take the derivative of exponential functions. So we multiply the derivatives together. Let's see. One half t to the one half when we take that derivative. It becomes one fourth. And now our variable is time. So capital T, we don't want to have that. Fortunately, we know what capital T is, so we can get rid of it. Another way of approaching this problem would be to compute this composition. And now you have a function that takes time and gives you the length, and you can just take the derivative of this function. You are using the chain rule either way. The only thing that varies is what form of the chain rule you're looking at. Compute some derivatives. I hope you've got that down. Um, these are all a little intricate. So A's the product rule, 
B is the chain rule, C a quotient, D a chain, E either quotient or chain, depending on how you do it, F chain. All optimization problems have to be taken as kind of their own thing. Here's how I approached the optimization problem on this test. I, on the other test, there's I think there must be some kind of optimization problem, but I don't recall it using the phrase verify that you have maximized area rather than minimizing it or anything like that. But we verify that this is a max, not a min using the sec first derivative test. 18 Do you recall that the area under a curve is the definite integral. And if you do recall that, do you recall how to take definite integrals? You can plug this into your calculator and get whatever you get. Here's what we get when we plug three in here. When we plug one in here, we get to those. 19, didn't cover this material. First thing we'll cover in calculus two, 20 implicit differentiation. That was on the other final.